Hello, and thank you for checking out my Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown, any percent, no damage run. The criteria for this run was the player's health bar could not drop below 100% from the moment you take control of your character until Varum is defeated and the Crossroads of Time main quest is complete. The Evil Eye Amulet will be utilized for this run, and though it does bring your health bar down to 1 HP, it does not count as damage taken, since it is a developer-intended mechanic and does not originate from an enemy source. For a detailed breakdown of the rule set for this run, reference the description section below. Finally, if you'd like to ask questions or interact with the community, be sure to join the Discord. The link for that and all of my socials are in the description section below. Now with all that out of the way, sit back, relax, and thank you for joining me for this challenge run. Alright, so something I want to ensure I explain at the very beginning of this is the technique I'll be using for damage. After watching gameplay from like speedrunners and just players in general, I've yet to see anyone stumble onto this, and the method for doing this is very simple. You attack twice, then you press the dodge button without directional input. That will cause Sargon to dodge straight back, and what it does is it resets the combo to allow you to start it again instantly. This is the fastest way i found in the game to output damage over time, and I'll utilize this method as my main method of attack for much of this run. And the power of this technique is that for most enemies, you'll be able to infinitely stun them, meaning they'll be unable to attack you if you do it properly. And for obvious reasons, that's very powerful. And so I leverage that heavily in this run. The strategy for this section coming up is, is fairly simple. So we're going to kick this first guy. I'm going to dodge through both of them. Then we'll dodge through those, even though they die. And we'll just basically keep dodging all the way down the lane and take this position. Once I get up to this position, I'm going to take out this archer. And then I'm just going to stand on this high ground. Basically, what will happen is uh, Orod and Menelaus will take out everyone here. And so from a no damage perspective, from a risk perspective, this is the best way to approach it simply because if I don't have to take the risk of getting hit, then that means my no damage run, at least in this instance, is safer. So that's what you're going to see here is me just kind of standing here waiting for uh, them to take out everybody and then I'll move on. As I run into this section, we'll get an arrow that'll pass right over us. Uh, that will always miss you just because of this projectile nature. I don't have to kill that guy, but I just knock him off just to make it safer. And then once we get up here, uh, I'll have a, a few enemies to deal with. And this is one of the kind of rare instances in the game where you will see me do the um, the actual like one, two, three combo. And that's simply for the knockback mechanic that you get that will knock these enemies down on the ground and kind of stun them a little bit so that I can get in and push them up against a wall, either on the left or the right. For these enemies, we'll go ahead and perfect parry. That's part of the tutorial. And then as the enemies filter in, they'll filter in two at a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back up and let Varum take everyone out. So I'm just going to keep basically Varum in between me and the enemies and use him as a wall. And uh, once we get the last guy here, then I'll move over to the right and we can enter the dialogue. Alright, so now we're heading towards the first boss, I guess, of the game. And it doesn't really feel like a boss. He feels like a mini boss, honestly. But... The, the general strategy that I have here is to just do damage to him and dodge through everything. At this point in the game, and I've seen many, many players do this, is that they try to perfect parry everything here. Dodging is easier than parrying. Dodging will give you iframes. Iframes meaning you're not um, susceptible to damage while that action is being completed. And at this early in the game, you don't have a surge meter. Which is really the only reason that you parry 99% of the time is to build Surge. Uh, or to make a mechanic easier for yourself. And in this instance, just dodging everything is much easier. So I'll be dodging everything as you've seen. 
And as we go into phase two here, it's going to be more of the same. It's just going to be close the distance, hit him, dodge through, close the distance, hit him, and try to maximize that damage output. And there's another benefit in doing this for this specific boss is that if you stay super close to him and you keep this tempo, then what happens is you negate his red jump slam attack that he does in both phase one and phase two. So this strategy, this approach also makes it safer to fight him simply because you cut out an extra ability and you don't have to worry about it. I'm proud of you, Sargon. I'm telling you! So... Once you come out of this cutscene, just go into a dead sprint, dodge through Anahita's guards, and move into the next area. So this is where we'll learn about our surges. As soon as I complete this surge, what I need to do is I need to immediately start sprinting forward. If I do that, I'll always miss the first guard, and then I can just go into the next area. For the Swordmaster, this is where you're going to see that technique come into, into play. So you can see, I don't infinitely stun him. At some point, he will break out of it. But if you look down at his health bar, you can see the amount of damage we're doing. And again, you do have Surge now, so you could take the approach of um, parrying his attacks. But half of his attacks are going to be unparryable red attacks anyway. So it makes more sense to just infinitely, well not infinitely, but CC him using this technique as much as we can. To do as much damage as we can quickly and then get through it. So a very simple strategy, just dodge through him and do the technique until he parries you back and then rinse and repeat. Sargon, who was it? So I do want to state much of this run, especially moving from area to area to area, is very, very scripted. Uh, meaning that all of the strategies you're going to see are intentional. If there's anything that happens that's like, oh, that's not what the strategy was and I had to improvise, then I'll let you guys know. But for the most part, what you're going to see through every enemy encounter outside of boss fights is very heavily scripted. So there's going to be a lot of it that I'm not going to talk to simply because it's like, hey, run through them, dodge past them, keep going, right? Um, there's not much to say other than that. So I'm just going to get it out of the way now because you're going to see it in a second. And uh, if there is anything major I want to discuss, then I'll, I'll pipe up. the time crystals in this run, basically everything that I do is scripted, as I mentioned earlier. So I know that I will kill this enemy. I should get about this many crystals by this point. So there are several areas in the game where I will get certain upgrades or what have you. And I know that I'm, I'm supposed to have a certain amount of money just based on where I am in the game. So if you're following along, as long as you're not dying a whole lot, because whenever you die, you actually lose some currency. So as long as you're not dying a lot, you should be in the same area as I am to get the same upgrades I do and do the same things I do. Go on. Try it. Hey, I might as well... Thank you, miss.
Sargon, up here! Take the prince to the Simor... Brings you hold. As I enter this area, I'm going to drop all the way down to the ground and then basically move to the other side and go back up. What this is going to allow me to do is access this area. So this is like a side quest in the game, I think, where you basically run around and you find these like prophecy sand pots or whatever. Um, and you'll turn them in over time. But the reason I'm doing this is because it's going to give me an amulet at the very beginning of the game. And we're only going to use this for a very short time, but it's this amulet, uh, Arslan's Glory, which increases, slightly increases the damage you do when you're at full HP. And so since we're not going to be taking damage, it's a net benefit. So I go ahead and pick it up now because it's super simple to get. We'll run back into the Haven. I'll put it on and then we'll go back because... Basically, the very next enemy that I'm actually going to engage is going to be a mini-boss. So for the undead prisoner, essentially all you're going to do is dodge through his attacks. Basically every attack he has is a red attack until you get into phase two, where he will do a uh, yellow parryable attack. So when I dodge through him, I'm going to do the uh, the technique uh, that I described earlier to you. That'll allow me to get three instances of that combo um, in on him. And then when he turns around, I'll get one before he jumps back or before he uses his yellow uh, parryable attack. And that's really the that's really the whole fight. Um, just basically dodging through him when he comes in to, to charge at you. Get those three instances, so that would be six attacks in on him. And then when he turns around at you, you can get two in. And once he gets into phase two, he'll do that three times. So, like right here, he should smash, smash, then smash again. You can see I'm getting two hits in every single time he does that. That's pretty much it. Very, very simple fight.
For this section here, there is a bit of RNG with the bird. So you can get in this weird wonky state where the bird will actually like fit into this little, that little area that I went through. If that happens, you may have to fight him <laughs> um, because you can get caught up uh, by him as you're trying to go down and get hit. So make sure you're paying attention to that. For this section, essentially what I'm doing is I'm leveraging the, um, the like charge attack, like the downward charge attack to hit these things. They, they can they can attack very, very quickly and unexpectedly without a whole lot of like tell to them. So that's why I'm taking this approach is, I don't know, for some of you, you might have way faster reaction speed than me, but um, yeah, I don't. So <laughs> this, is the, this is the method I chose to take to guarantee I don't get hit by these guys. For Ehrlich here, I think that's how you say his name, uh, another very, very simple boss fight. I would call this a mini boss fight. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is we're just going to close the distance on him um, after he charges the first time and stay in his face. Okay, so basically, anytime you see him go red, go through his feet. And by doing that, you'll always be able to hit him twice. And when he does his purple spit, you can hit him two times for four hits with the uh with the combo so that that's basically the entire fight i just explained it to you you're gonna rinse and repeat that the entire time so very very simple fight now i will use surge attacks here but it's very important for a strut for an area later coming up and i'll explain where that is but it's very important that i leave this fight with at least one surge attack so meaning i have to have at least one surge bar um full so Basically, I'm not going to just completely empty Surge on this guy, which you couldn't anyway. I've only got one Surge attack. And the level one Surges, I think, take 25 seconds to cool down, if I remember correctly. But uh, I'm going to make sure that I have at least one Surge bar when we leave this fight. That's very, very important for the strategies that are going to be coming up. And I, I didn't mention it earlier, but that that boss, Ehrlich, you can actually skip that. You don't have to do that fight. Uh, I do it because 99% of people are going to go that way. And I wanted to make sure that everyone had a strategy for that. And it's a very simple boss fight, so... As I drop down here, this guy will always miss me. So uh, all you need to do is make sure you push him back far enough on this wall before you start the combo. Otherwise, you can, um, when you dodge backwards, you can fall off the ledge there. This was a mistake. Um, <laughs> I have a tendency when I go into a new zone to like slide and then go into the sprint and I did that here and forgot not to do that so fell down. So that's not part of it. Basically you'd come out of there and just jump over and you would never fight that bird. As I go into this next zone, this is where we need the surge attack. So I'm going to come in, shoot it once to stun it with an arrow, go straight into the surge, and then back up. Perfect parry. And then I'll parkour up the side here. We'll get another perfect parry, and then just continue on. And that will happen that way every single time without fail. 
The only variable there is that bird that you saw like came over my head a second ago. Sometimes that will impact the uh, the side of the wall for the platform that you're on. Sometimes it'll go over your head, uh, but it'll never hit you, which is the point. So that is 100% consistent. Where I'm going now is I'm on my way to get the first Xerxes coin. As far as I know, it's the first one you're capable of getting in the game. At least a, uh, along the main story path. Uh, a very easy one to get, very consistent to get. There's not a whole lot of risk here. As long as you take it slow and you're paying attention, you shouldn't fall and take damage here. So before moving on, I'm going to go ahead and head up because I want to get the, again, first um, ingot, I think is what they're called, um, that I believe you can get in the game, at least, again, along the main story path. And this one specifically, once we get back to the Haven, we'll be using to upgrade our weapon. So definitely get that one so you can get your, uh, your level one upgrade for your swords um, early. This will be the first amulet holder that I'm going to get. Uh, I believe by the end of this run, I end up with seven slots. Uh, I think pretty early on, I end up with six. So um, we're not, we're not going to go out of our way to get a whole lot of uh, amulets. It's, it's just going to be a few key ones. So if you're following, if you're following this for yourself, make sure that you're getting these amulet holders because they'll be very important later to make sure that you have the same amount of slots that I do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and head up and we're going to go ahead and complete um, the nine basic trainings from Artaban. Artaban. And the reason for this is the surge ability that he gives you after that is something I will need later on. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess need is kind of a heavy word, but having two level one surges is very useful. And this is the easiest level one surge to get for the no damage run simply because you cannot take damage inside of these training sessions. You can get hit and you'll respond as if you took damage, but you don't actually take damage. So it's one of the safest ways to go about it. And then on top of that, you're also getting crystals. So for the nine basic training sessions, you'll get 50 crystals. And then for the advanced ones, starting with the bow and the chakram, you'll start getting a hundred crystals. So you get quite a bit of currency by the end of this. Uh, once I do these nine, I should come out with um, around 800, 900, somewhere in between that range. And that'll put us in a very good spot for the rest of the run as far as like um, time crystals and economy and stuff like that to get all the upgrades I need to get. So again, feel free to skip past this if you want. There's no way to take damage here. And it's just going to be going through the first nine uh, tutorials or training sessions, whatever, that are in the list. Now... There and now, you know, <laughs> you can alternative. You can st 
this should As my Chris Arth Arth Look, you Now, right You see that, and it uh, I No, no, take. What you? Are there eat notch and and suck? But you. Oh, it's not the dog. You're. You're. You what? Jumping. Parrying. Not all par- You're off- Attacking- You can can sprinting at uh, the Get that. Do be vigilant. Some move. You act what? I wish I could. You're not fortunate. <laughs> there is that. Get. Ah, it's it's by ah, so, ah. Get in.
reverse. Risk try. Keep. That's it's you. Every war keep up. Fine work. Okay, so now we've got the surge. That's what we wanted. We've got our money on this run. It ended at 858. Usually it's within that, right? So as I mentioned earlier, everything here is scripted. So it's, you know, if I kill an enemy, did I pick up all of the crystals they dropped? Something like that. That could sometimes make it a little bit less or a little bit more um, than, you know, a previous run. So... I'm going to go ahead and get the level 1 sword upgrade here. And then I'm also going to get the quiver upgrade. Now, once I get this first quiver upgrade, that's all I need. I never have to upgrade the bow again. I've seen a lot of players really, really like advocate for, hey, get as many arrows as you can because you can do certain combos with the arrows. Um, basically all of those combos are useless compared to, or maybe not useless, but inferior compared to just doing hit, hit, dodge, hit, hit, dodge, and just repeating that. So you only like, you only need 15 arrows for the majority of this game. And that's just to give you some wiggle room on some boss fights where arrows come in handy. Now we're on our way to the first major boss of the uh, of the game, and I just call it a manticore because I can't actually say its name. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. But anyways, this is what I consider the first major boss of the game, and it's very, very simple with the approach that I take. So basically copy what I do. I'm not going to go into detail on every single mechanic. But for, for each ability that he does, I have a very specific response and so that's what i would suggest you do essentially just stay close to him anytime he starts up for that tail swipe make sure you dodge it early like as the animation begins if you do it too late you'll uh, you'll get caught out by the damage and get hit all right so we'll go in using our technique we should be able to get about 12 hits on him and so he's not taking damage now because he's pushing into phase two. As soon as we come out of phase two, I want to make sure that I have a surge. I'm going to go forward and instantly hit him. What this will do is it will cancel his AI, um, which is supposed to implement the purple orb that comes out. That's supposed to start at the beginning of phase two. Uh, so it cancels that ability, so you get to skip it. And that's one less thing you have to worry about. And so we'll dodge forward, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll dodge forward again. And that's that's the simplest way, in my opinion, to deal with that attack and gives you a lot of agency to uh, to do damage to him. So one of the other things I'll notice for this fight, you really, really want to, whenever he goes up in the air and he does that slam down, just sprint past him. Because dodging through that is very inconsistent, at least in my opinion. Sometimes you'll get it, and sometimes you won't, won't, and you'll feel like you didn't do anything different, like your timing was the same. Um, but it, it does seem to be a little inconsistent, so if you sprint past it, you'll always miss it 100% of the time, guaranteed. As far as surges go on this fight, I don't use a lot of them simply because I want to leave this fight with two surges. Um, and that's going to be for an area that we're going to do later on. So I think I'm, if I remember correctly, I'll use a surge here in a second, but that's because I know that I can, um, I can get it back on his yellow attack, on his yellow charge attack. I think I do it here. Maybe I don't. I don't really remember. 
all the runs after a while start to blend together. <laughs> all right, we don't get it here, but we're at we're at two, which is what um, for this no damage run, what we want to leave the fight with. Sign of the This hidden area here, this is where I'll get the second coin that I need for the run. So the coins that I'm getting, uh, essentially I need to get two of them before we go into the depths, which is like the sewer-ish area of the game, uh, after you face Varum the first time on the bridge. Uh, but anyways, I need to make sure that I have two before going into that area. So this is the second one, so that'll be the last coin that we get until we get um, basically into the depths. All right, so the surges uh, that I mentioned earlier on the boss fight, this is where we need them. So essentially, as I come out of the cutscene, we're going to do this combo where we do a hit, hit, arrow, shoot, hit, hit, hit. And that will kill all of these outright as long as I do it fast enough. And so we want to do it fast enough so that we can get each one of these in isolation. After the third one, we're going to go ahead and use our surge. That'll push these two into the wall and allow me to finish them off. And right after that, we need to go to the other side, use the other surge and basically repeat the idea, basically push them into the wall so that I can finish them off. And then after that, we're gonna scale the wall and play Spider-Man. We're just gonna sit up on this wall because after that, those last two enemies, Varum comes into the area and there should be four or five, I can't remember, guards that come in and he just takes care of everybody. So very similar to at the very beginning of the game when I set up on the platform and waited, we're doing the same method. If I can have someone else do all the damage and kill everything, then that means it's zero risk for me, which is what I want for a no damage run. And so that's what we do there. We let Varum kill everybody and then I can move on.
so what we're going to get now is we're going to get another amulet holder. This is just going to guarantee that um, I have the right amount of slots for all of the amulets we're going to get here soon. So just follow my path, my example here, and you should be able to get this with uh, without too much issue. The next platforming section could be a pain sometimes. And if I remember correctly, I mess it up and I have to fall back down, dash over and restart it. Uh, because if I would have stayed up there, I would have taken damage. Let's let's see if this is the run I'm remembering where it happens. Yeah, right here. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to have enough time. We just reset. And in a no damage run, it's very important that you recognize instances like that where it's like, you know what? I messed up. Let me just reset. Like, don't let me not take the risk <laughs> of falling and getting hit on a spike or something. What I'm working towards now is I want to go up here and get this uh, this ingot. So this will be the second one that we get. And what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to get this enemy to get onto the stairs. So when I change it, he'll go down. Um, which honestly probably isn't the best method. Um, because if he goes down, then he's like right in front of where you need to exit. So I guess ideally you'd want him to stay up there. But it is what it is. This is just the way I've always done it, where I I kind of maneuver him down each of the stairs so that he ends up like that. I'm going to go into this area, uh, simply just unlock the fast travel point. This is one that we're going to use later on um, in the run. So I want to make sure that I have this unlocked. Go ahead and regen arrows and safety save. If if I remember correctly, at the time I did this run, um, I had a PB of two, I think it was. So I was there are going to be points in this run where I safety save or what I call safety save. Um, because later on, if we get hit even one time, we auto-die because of uh, the amulet that I'll have. And speaking of amulets, we're going to come over here and we're going to get the um, the first major amulet that we're going to use for basically the rest of the run, the Will of Rostam. And what this does is it just increases the damage uh, that you do with your melee attacks. So we'll be upgrading that one um, pretty heavily as we go through the run. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the Will of Rostam here. So that'll give me a little bit more damage that uh, that we have to our melee attacks.
We'll get an enemy up here similar to the one we fought at the beginning of the game. Uh, the technique is going to be the exact same. We're going to do the exact same thing. Nothing different. We'll just wait for him to come out of the with a parry. Dodge through him. Do it again. He should die. Very, very simple. Here you are at last. So I'm going to go up here. We're going to get the Day Temple fast travel. This is going to be a very heavily used fast travel point for the run. So make sure you get that. I'm going to go ahead and safety save down here. Uh, it's very, very easy to die to Varum because you're supposed to. I think, like, obviously the developers made it so you could no damage it, but you're supposed to get beat by him um, to push the story forward. So I go ahead and safety save here just because it's very, very easy. Um, plus, I've had bugs a couple of times on him. So where, like, he's been stuck out of bounds and I had to, like, reset, like reload the game anyways so what i'm gonna do here strategy wise in phase one for varum all i'm gonna do is leverage our combo and if we do that he'll do that repost and then that slam and we can just lock him into an infinite cycle of that if we're lucky once we push into phase two we're gonna do more of the same however there is a couple of rules so once he either dashes at me the first time um or if I get him to about 50% HP, whichever of those happens first, then I stop doing this because you enter into a state where, and it's hard to explain, but you enter into this state where his he, he can basically break out of the ability and hit you. Uh, like break out of this infinite CC and hit you. So I do it to either that break point where he dashes or when he gets around 50%. So there's the dash. We won't do it anymore. What we're going to do is change to a hit, hit, and then uppercut or hit, hit, and then you hold up like that. So that's how we're going to do damage now to him. Um, you can't use surge attacks on this instance of Varum. All the other instances you can, but um, this very first fight with Varum, you can't use them. So that's why we're not using them. But the mechanics are very simple to deal with. You just have to learn what they look like and learn the timing. So we're now into phase three, which means his attacks are going to modify just a bit. So we'll deal with some of them in a slightly different manner, but. So I'm going to use arrow shots to stay in the air. Arrows don't do damage to him at all. Um, in this fight, you could also use like an up attack to stay in the air. But point is, you just want to stay in the air when you're doing those uh, those threads or whatever that he does. So you'll see here when you jump, I'll do an arrow. Again, you could do an up attack to keep yourself in the air there. Or you could just attack regular and would keep yourself in the air too. If, if you don't want to use arrows. All right, so that's the fight. Now we're in the depths. How did an old woman no, we a of old Alec type?
So we're going to get this ingot. This will be the uh, the second that we need. So we have one. Now we'll have two. That'll, uh, that'll allow me to upgrade to our second weapon tier. Uh, once we get to that point. And then this coin here we're going to pick up. This will give me the three coins that I need so that we can buy the uh, evil eye amulet that we're going to leverage for the rest of this run. And we'll get that in a second here. So this is the scrapper. This is where we're going to get that evil eye amulet. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase basically all of our melee attack power. Um, but what it does is it sets your health to one HP. Um, so if you get hit even one time, you insta die, which for a no damage run is fine, right? Because we're not allowed to get hit. But um, again, that's one of the reasons I'll be safety saving at certain parts is... Because if you do get hit, then you auto-die and you want to... Again, I think I had a PB of 2. PB meaning like my my best run through the entire game was that I only got hit two times. For anyone that doesn't understand that terminology, that's what it means. Um, but I believe I had a PB of 2 going into this run. So if I had a PB of 1, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Because if I get hit one time, then that's it, right? But uh, the best I had ever done, I believe, was 2. And... Because of this amulet, you can just auto-die, so... But yeah, anyways, we're gonna leverage the hell out of that amulet, because it's really, really good. It increases your damage quite a bit. He's fast for an old man. So up ahead, we're going to go ahead and put on the Evil Eye Amulet. And then we're going to have to go fight Alternate Sargon. And for Alternate Sargon, we're going to use a slightly different infinite combo to CC him. And so what that's going to look like is we're going to replace the dodge with an arrow shot. But to start it out, we need to go ahead and surge attack into him. Then we need to walk forward, hit him twice, arrow shot, and then we're going to repeat this. And as you can see, if done properly, this will put him into a state where he's infinitely stunned. And we just juggle him in the air like this, and we can kill him for free. You know, you're not... 
Look, you. I'm gonna regen arrows here, and then we're gonna make our way to the catacombs. It's Prince. What? But I can't marry you with the if the what she's I my uh, but we buy you extend he you can't see it. I'm going to drop down under the elevator here for our next coin. And the reason I get this one is it's on the way. It's fairly simple to get. There's not like a whole lot of risk with it. But this will be um, one of two that I need for um, the next amulet that we're going to get so that I can upgrade it to, to max basically right as we get it. I feel so weird hearing like an actual voice there versus the AI. <laughs> I've had this game for a while before it came out, um, thanks to Ubisoft. And uh, so used to hearing the AI voice, which I kind of prefer, honestly. So this area, basically the strategy here is to manipulate the enemy AI to basically come over to where I would jump up. So that's what I'm doing here. When you see me going either to the top right or the, the bottom left, it's to try to get the enemy AI to move out over like the wood plank or whatever that's there so that I can jump up and hit them. Because this is the safest way to fight two of them. Uh, I could go up and fight the one, but you have a, a small chance of getting hit unless you go all the way back and go up the far left side. So as I drop down here, we're going to get... I don't even know what this enemy is called. <laughs> like demon ghosts or something, but... Uh, simply put, you can dodge all of its attacks or you can perfect parry it like I did there. 
And then you can just do the uh, infinite combo on it until it's dead. So this chest here that I get, we're going to get 200 crystals out of it. And you're always going to get that one that comes out and swipes at you. And I know it looks dangerous. It looks close, but he will never hit you as long as you're sprinting. Even my light cannot shine beyond the place of its beginning. Goodbye, Sargon. Nice one. Okay, so the objective now is to get to the pirate village fast travel point. And it's a fast travel point that we are going to use a lot, very similar to the day temple. So right after we get through this story beat, that's that's our next objective. I'm going to make my way up this elevator. We're going to go to the left and we're going to get the chest here, which is another amulet holder. And then we're basically going to go back out and continue on to the pirate village fast travel. This area is kind of tricky. So we've got these bats and the issue with the bats is that they can explode on you. They'll ever do, they'll only ever do two abilities, which you saw there. They'll shoot a fireball or they'll kind of dart into you. The reason that I placed the image is because I've had it happen and I've lost runs before where I've hit them twice, they go to explode and they don't knock back. So they explode right on top of you. And if you take too long, like that one right there would, would explode back on me. But if you take too long to respond to it, you could get that splash damage and then that's it. You, you take damage, right? So I, I use the image or the copy to go back uh, away from them. That way I know 100% every single time I'm going to be safe. And I'm just going to kite this one back to an area where I've got more real estate to, to work around instead of trying to fight it on a platform. And kind of instinctually now, like even even if I don't need to teleport, I, I, I kind of always do. It's just kind of habit at this point. So he got hit by the mine, which kind of messed up his AI a little bit. So I think I had to go pick him back up and then come back, I think. Or maybe I fight him right here. I don't remember what I do. Now we fight him right here. Okay. Yeah, see, I don't... I don't need to teleport that one. Uh, he's far enough back, so. All right, we've made it to the uh, the fast travel point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Haven. And what my objective is here is we want to go to this elevator and we're going to take this elevator all the way down um, back to the depths. And what that'll do is it'll put us right beside the scrapper. And so from there, what we're going to do is we're going to head over and do that side quest with the mother or whatever from earlier. We're going to go do that side quest because at the completion of that side quest, we will get an amulet that allows us to do more damage if we're if we're at low HP. And because of the Evil Eye Amulet, which sets our HP to 1, the game recognizes that as 1 HP, so it makes it um, active. So it makes this, this amulet that we're going to go get now active, 
So basically it's just maximizing the evil eye amulet to the best extent possible is kind of the theory behind this. So I'm going to make my way over there and I'll speak to it more once we get uh, to the actual combat stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take some time now to clear out all these um, these bugs. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be coming back through this area from this like from where they're all situated after the mini boss fight that we're about to do for the side quest. So for the mini boss here, it's basically an airlick that we fought earlier, except it feels like it dies a lot faster, but maybe that's just because I've got better damage now. Um, but all the mechanics are the exact same. The strategy is the exact same. So that's what you're going to see here. There's nothing different, nothing new. As soon as we get done with this, we're going to go to the left and I'm just going to walk in the room to get the objective to go and then I'm going to go back out. We're going to get uh, this conversation right after the cutscene. You need to hold forward and start attacking. Uh, that just guarantees that you don't take a hit coming out of the cutscene. All right, so there's our amulet and Dominable Spirit. And just from the base level amulet, just picking it up without upgrading it, you get a moderate damage increase when you're um, at low health. So that coupled onto the evil eye gives us quite a bit of extra damage. Oh, I remember this. So I could have lost my run so easy there. I, I went a little bit too far forward too early and the, uh, the platform broke and I fell and I wasn't expecting it. So had the... Uh, had the acid been pooling from there at that time, I would have I would have had nowhere to go and we would have taken damage, so I got very, very lucky there. I'm gonna head over here, unlock the fast travel, and this is just so I can go back to Pirate Village. Uh, or sorry, the Haven. Um, from here we're gonna go ahead and, and do some upgrades and then we'll head back to Pirate Village. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity just to go ahead and uh, max out as much as I can the Indomitable Spirit. You can't upgrade Evil Eye, unfortunately. That would be pretty cool if you could, but uh, I can do the Indomitable Spirit one. So we're going to get uh, our level two swords, and then I'm going to get two levels um, on the... I believe it's two levels on the Indomitable Spirit. So we'll get the base level and then the plus one using the coin that we got earlier. <clears throat> or plus two, sorry. And that takes care of that one. So now we are uh, pretty good on damage right now. We're actually ahead of the damage profile of where you should be at this point in the game. So things are going to die very, very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and put on our Indomitable Spirit. And so now we're we're really really good uh, damage wise. Now this next area, uh, basically going through the sunken harbor, is very 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 dangerous. This is a very technical area. You have to move very fast on some of these strategies, specifically because of these dual wielding pirate enemies. I don't know what they're called, but um, it's very easy to take a hit from them. So everything you see here, as I go through it again, is scripted. So I know where they are, every jump, every parkour, every everything. So for here, we're going to wait for her to jump out, trade places, wait again, trade places, um, etc. So 
If you're trying to do this yourself, make sure that you are following the example exactly because even a slight delay or hesitation will get you hit. And a small note for this section, when you release this on the other platform, make sure that the log is all the way on the right, like at its apex on the swing before you release it. And that'll just give you a good cadence as you're going through to jump over them easily. I'm going to unlock the Soma tree fast travel because we're going to we're going to come back to get a another amulet later on. Um, as we come into this area, we're going to go ahead and do our infinite combo on this guy. We're going to do it one more time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push forward here all the way into the wall. And then we need to see what this enemy is going to do. So he'll either do one or two things. He'll either do that yellow attack, which he'll dodge through like I did there. Or he'll come up and try and attack you. And when he comes up to try to attack you, just jump over and dash past him. And then he'll follow it up with that yellow attack that you saw there. So the strategy for that last guy is just basically wait for the yellow attack. Dodge him until you get it, and then you can finish him off. Do you know my father? Okay, after this uh, guy explodes, we're going to go all the way to the left and we're going to pick up another ingot for our next or, you know, progressing towards our next weapon upgrade. Now, this next area is very, very technical and um, has quite a few differences to it, depending on what kind of RNG you get. So we want to start on this platform and want to take him out. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to jump over, slam to the ground and then jump to the right. And the reason for that is to outrange that little, it kind of looks like a sonic attack, but they're trying to transform. And so we don't want that. And if you outrange that transform, then uh, then you're good to go. Had I gotten up to the platform where the second bird was, 
a little bit faster, then what would have happened is both of these guys I'm having to deal with right now wouldn't be active. They would be on their own platforms and their AI would be inactive. So because I took slightly too long, we entered into a different scenario where I have to deal with them. And the way to deal with them is to just stay away from them. And once you get one like locked in a 1v1, like where you can just deal with it, um, then you want to rotate uh, arrow shots and hits. And the arrow shots are just there to stop them from being able to parry you. So me unlocking this fast travel is kind of a holdover from old routing. Um, I don't need this one anymore. I uh, I get to the Tower of Silence a, a different way now. So uh, you will, like if you're doing this route, if you're doing this for yourself, you don't need to unlock that one. So for Kiana, the boss we're about to fight, it's, it's a fairly simple fight. Uh, really the risk is in the transitions because there is a lot of parrying and it can move a little fast sometimes if you're not paying attention. But the way I like to open this is just dump all of my surge because when we get into that transition period, we're going to we're going to have to parry so many enemies that we're going to get full surge back anyways. So that should be transition push. Yep. And you'll see as we go into this, I'm basically at zero surge uh, and we're going to get it back really, really, really quick. So one of the things I'll note with this fight is as as we enter into phase two, I'm going to move all the way to the left here, and that's specifically for this attack. And the reason for that is because as he comes out, then what will happen is he'll shoot those purple um, explodey plants or mushrooms, whatever the hell they are. And if you're up against the far left or the far right of the area, then what happens is at least half of what he shoots goes off screen so that you don't have to deal with it. So it just maximizes the area that's available and open for you. So I mess up a little bit there. I should have used my surge just to maximize damage since again, I'm going to come in here and get it all back anyway. Right, again, we're going to move over. It ended up not doing that attack this time, which is good, but better to prepare for it. Go ahead and dump all of our surge for the most part. And you can parry that spear that she throws. It's just um, when, it's, when I start super close to it like that, I don't like to immediately turn around just because of the speed that the wolf travels. So I just tend to jump that, but you can parry that just to make, make that clear in case it was not obvious.
For this zone, what you want to do is you want to jump over. We're going to slide under the Erlik, go all the way over, and then start uh, killing the birds. And you want to stop like right here on the edge because there's another Erlik to your left. Once we kill the birds, we'll move forward. We'll dodge under that one and then go through the wall. Now, I jump back on the wall because for whatever reason, I would say, I don't know, 75% chance um, that when you get to this fast travel... It'll be locked out because the game will still consider you in combat with that last Ehrlich. But for whatever reason, if you jump up towards it, and then it'll do an attack, right? But if you jump up towards the wall and then fall back down, it'll do its attack, and that seems to break that loop. So that's why I do that there. So now that we have the Dimensional Claw ability, I'm going to use that quite a lot in this game uh, for, you know, everything else that remains to move enemies around, to make fights easier by making... You know, 2v1s, 1v1s, uh, things like that. So we're going to get a lot of use out of the claw. We're also going to use the claw for um, certain boss strategies and to avoid certain attacks in some fights. So for this next uh, combat area, everything here is scripted except for the last two enemies that you fight. And the reason for that is because the last two enemies, they basically, it's, it's RNG dependent on how they move once they spawn. So let's get there and then I'll talk to that a little bit. So let's go back up. We're going to make this a 1v1 fight like I mentioned earlier instead of a 2v1. Go ahead and spit out this last guy. Take him out. Now what I need to do is leave my image up here on the top right. I'm going to take this guy out, and then what's supposed to happen is we'll get two of the mages that come in. I'm going to take the one on the left, and then the one on the right will either teleport up here like he did, or he'll he'll teleport um, like away from me, or he just won't move at all. So you have multiple scenarios that can happen there. What just happened right now where he teleported up to the right is what happens the majority of the time and is the ideal scenario because then I can just teleport up there and infinitely chain CC him and kill him outright and we, then we don't have to worry about any of his mechanics. So if you're doing this yourself, that's not a guarantee that that'll happen. So make sure that you actually understand how to fight those mages uh, because the, the odd chance that the RNG isn't in your favor will force you to have to do that. So we ate that guy. I'm just going to go down and then throw him into the pit here, which will kill him. Because otherwise, you won't be able to kill any of the enemies here uh, while that one mage is up there singing. Because it, it like affords them protection or something, so they can't be killed. But we don't need to fight anybody here. All we need to do is get through the area. So That guy will always do that yellow attack 100% of the time. So very, very easy to just dodge through. Now for this section, as I go down, my first objective is to get the mage and I miss the jump. I want to jump up to the wood platform, but to get the mage to do his ice attack. He actually doesn't do his ice attack. He does his orb attack. So it makes it a little bit more difficult because now I have to kind of get these orbs to go away. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to bait him back down to the lower position. And uh, he's, <clears throat> he's not really going for it, which kind of sucks. Um, this was kind of a one-off, like I had never had it be this difficult. I also never missed the platform that many times. So I was like, well, let me run all the way to the right. Maybe that will make him move out a little bit towards the center and then that'll unlock him and he'll come down. That didn't work. So I just keep doing this over and over and over again. And what ends up happening is as I go over to the right to look through the wall, he teleports in, which he had never, ever done before. I didn't even know he could do that. So I got really lucky there that I was able to get on top of him really, really fast and uh, and eat him and then, you know, move on without too much issue. But ideally what would happen is you would go in there the first time 
and you would jump up and that would bait his freeze attack. You would teleport back, you would do it again, and then when you jump up there, he's standing right there, and then you could just eat him. Um, I keep saying eat him. It, hopefully you guys know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, basically using your dimensional claw, uh, claw or black hole, some people have called it. Uh, but basically you would use that to, to get him and then you can move on like I did. For this section here, it's just a bunch of puzzles. Really nothing to speak to here. Uh, I'm sure there's various ways to do these puzzles. This is just how I best rationalize to get through them. So if you do them differently uh, and it's better than this, let me know. Or if yours, your way of doing this was worse than this, let me know if you learned something. He's always here.
All of the enemies in this section are pretty much scripted to do the same first attack. It's not guaranteed, but it's very, very, very high chance that they will do the same thing every time you come through here. So for the most part, just do what I do and you should be fine getting through this area uh, without too much trouble. Hope you like danger. You skip. The first lock I'm going to get here is the one that I just call sandworms. <laughs> so we're going to go to the left here, and basically this is just another. It's it's pretty much like a platforming section, like the last one, where it was like, hey, just know where to jump and what the timing is. To dash through these things this is very much the same thing it's just that stuff moves now so if you follow my example here exactly as i do it you should get through this with no issue uh the timing on everything should be good so i guess that's all i'll say about this there's really there's really no strategy here it's just knowing how to get through this and the timing of how to do all that
Okay, so now we're on to the smasher side, or what I call the smasher side. You'll see why in a second if you haven't played it yourself. Um, again, similar to the uh, the sandworm side, it's just about knowing the timing of everything. This is all platforming. There's no enemies. So just follow what I do here and you should be successful. Okay, so that's uh, everything we needed to get to the next boss. So now we'll go to our snake boss again. For the life of me, I cannot say its name. <laughs> so really for this boss, it's about maximizing the damage in between attacks, specifically when its head's just hanging in the air. So as soon as you come out of the cutscene, we're going to get quite a bit of damage on the head. This attack will always be the first attack it does, followed by the tail swipe. So those two attacks will always be the same. Uh, if you are able to push the damage fast enough, then you'll you'll get into phase two. As you come into phase two, this will always be the first attack it does. The second attack will always be followed up by the tail coming into the middle. And the way that I choose to handle that is just to sit on the outside uh, of the area and just parry those. And then on the last one, you can just jump over and def uh, jump over and dash through. Now, starting after that attack, then you will get. Uh, you know, random attacks that you're not going to know uh, what's coming, so to speak, right? They're not scripted. They're going to do this and then this. So um, just respond to them as as appropriate. Uh, this is what starts phase three. So um, as you go into phase three, those orbs dropping will always happen. And then everything after that will be uh, random RNG. Now, re really hard to, like, explain strategy and go through these boss fights because they happen so quickly. That one was just me guessing. Like, I didn't know that the that attack was going to happen. I just, uh, I had a gut feeling. So that's that's why I put the uh, the image up in the air. Um, that was just a lucky prediction. So that, that was, that's not a scripted attack. Um, that's guaranteed to happen. But that's the fight. Saw Sadwest.
you again. In this section, really the only advice I have is don't rush. Take this section slowly because of the spike that materializes and then tracks you down. And it's going to keep doing that through the entire, like your entire ascent through this area. So really just be patient, take it slow. And I like to jump when, when I know that it's destroyed. But there is, a, there is a time window there. If you take too long to get to the next platform, you could end up in a situation where it could hit you as you're, as you're maneuvering through. And, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot you can do about that. So this is all about timing and all about patience going through this area. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take a slight detour. We're going to go upgrade um, our stuff, but I forgot earlier to come back to the Soma Tree to get our, our last amulet that we're going to use for the run. Uh, what I should have done was after we beat Kiana and we got to that, that fast travel point that was like right after those two Ehrlichs or whatever, I should have come back here, grabbed it, and then gone back, but I didn't add this amulet into the run until very recently so uh it wasn't in muscle memory <laughs> to go back and get it and i forgot about it uh, luckily i remembered it when i got here because this is where i upgraded as well so i was like oh man i need to get that i forgot <laughs> so, what we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and finish out these um well the ones i can anyways we're gonna finish out the, the trainings to get the extra money. Uh, again, these are 100 each, not 50 each, like the standard ones. And these go fairly quick, so you get 100 uh, crystals for, you know, very, very quick training. But I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this so that I have enough money to get all of the upgrades that I need to get at this stage in the run. And then we'll go get those upgrades, and then I'll continue on. Again, you're welcome to skip this, though, since you can't take damage in any of these training sessions. I see you. I'm oh, it's off. I could perhaps. Oh. This pop. Stay. Fascinating. I can't. Did you? I could can't. At this point in the run, we're going to level up to about max level. This is going to be about as as maxed out as we're going to be for the for the rest of the game. So I went ahead and got tier three for our swords. That's as high as we'll get on the swords. I'm going to also go ahead and upgrade uh, upgrade our uh, Will of Rostam and then Turning Wind. So we'll do uh, two more upgrades, if I remember correctly, before the end of the game, and that's basically just those last two amulets. 
and then we'll be as geared as we would be for the entire game. But we'll do those upgrades a little bit later on. So as we make our way up towards Menelaus, one of the things that I need to do uh, specifically for that fight is I need to get an, uh, an additional surge ability. Uh, but before I go into that surge ability, I want to max out my surge. So I'm going to parry these archers to do that. And I'm going to use this, uh, this farming area, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, a few more times in the run just to make sure that I have the surge that I need before I go into key encounters. Uh, anyways, as I move over to the right here, everything that I'm doing here is very, very scripted. So if you're doing the side, make sure you do this the same way. There is a little bit of RNG climbing up to here because you'll never know exactly where the archer is on one of the three platforms. But basically you just stand there and you want to stand right on the edge so you don't aggro in the little minions that spawn as you enter that section. And then when you see him firing from you and the platform's at its lowest, you'll just jump over the arrow like I did, dodge towards him, and then eat him, and then you can move on. We took you in. As I move to the top of this area, we're going to have two enemies above us, and we're just going to eat them one at a time and spit them out over on the right side. So I need to jump here to get the other one to engage, very similar to like when we were in the catacombs, to get those creatures to move over. I'm going to head back to Pirate Village and then I'm going to make my way down to where the seal was that led you down to the Pit of Eternal Sands uh, because that's the fastest way to and the safest way to get to where we need to go. And what we're going to do is once we get down into uh, the Sands area, we're going to be going for, I think it's the fourth alternate Sargon encounter. But we're going to go fight an alternate Sargon to get the Surge ability that he drops, uh, which is something something Gilgamesh. And the reason why I'm getting that, and, and you'll see it when we get to the Menelaus fight, is as the phase transitions from phase one to phase two with Menelaus, he shoots all these red arrows. And for the no damage run, you cannot get hit by them. And it's very, very easy to get hit by them because there's... a a huge element of RNG there. They don't follow a pattern and there's no way to like kind of cheese it like there is, for example, with some of the other um, heavy spam attacks that happen uh, with with like a later boss in the game. So the only way that 
I found to deal with it was to use this ability, which gives you um, increases to your dodge. It gives you increases to your attack. It basically boosts all of your all of your abilities. And for whatever reason, when you dodge with this ability, things just go right through you. Um, and you also get like a slow time effect too. So that's the reason we're going to pick it up. Um, and again, you'll see that in, in practice, how it actually works once we get to the fight. But that's what we're doing to get to here. So I'm going to go ahead and save a safety save because this, uh, this alternate Sargon is very, very easy to mess up and very easy to take damage on. Uh, but I do want to credit the strategy for this to a good friend of mine, Pretzel. And um, he's, as far as I know, he's also doing this uh, this no damage run. So everything you see here with how we're attacking is the strategy. You need to have the upgrades that we have here. Um, and you need to do the surge attacks and all of the other attacks exactly as I do them, except for the kick. The The dodge kick was, uh, was an accident, but everything else there... You would want to follow it step by step by step to pull that off and kill him so that he doesn't get to respond or react to you. So let's take this opportunity to go ahead and put on uh, our Gilgamesh Surge. What's it called? Soul of Gilgamesh. Okay. So yeah, let's put on that, that Gilgamesh Surge. And then basically now we're just going over to uh, Fightman Elias. So we've got a, we've got a little bit of uh, platforming to do to get there, but uh, we'll be there shortly. As I make my way to the top here, I'm going to go over to the right and open this gate. And that's just in case I die. I would have to go back and farm arrows to get my surge back up before I did another attempt. So as the fight starts, essentially, uh, phase one is just staying ranged from him uh, until he does the arrow attack. When he does it, we're just going to dodge under it to close the distance and then just do this, uh, this combo. We'll stay in that cadence until he uh, pushes phase two. Usually it takes two, uh, two cycles of that. So here are the red arrows. As soon as I get control back of Sargon, we're going to go ahead and use Gilgamesh. And then I'm just going to put myself in the right wall and I'm going to hit the dodge button nonstop. Now the dodge button, you have to hit it with a certain cadence. If you do it too fast or too slow, you'll mess it up. That's really hard to explain for obvious reasons. So uh, you'll just have to try it out for yourself. But if you do it properly, you can see all the arrows go right through you. Uh, you take no damage, and you also get that cool slow time effect. So once that mechanic is done, we'll be in phase two. For phase two, you want to put yourself all the way up against the wall. I choose to be on the left. And the reason for that is because Menelaus can, uh, when he charges at you, he can do a punch to your front, or he can fake you out, dodge through you, and punch. If you're on the solid surface of the wall, the AI is not allowed to go through that barrier, so therefore he will only ever punch uh, in front of you. So it makes it uh, very easy and very predictable. And if you sit on this wall and you respond the way I do, you'll only ever get two mechanics, which will be his punch 
or his arrows. And as you've seen for his punch, we block those, we do our combo, and then I back off. And then for the arrows, he comes in, we hit the first one and hit the second one in the air. So, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so phase two, you're really only responding to two attacks. Uh, phase one, you're responding to one attack. And then in the transition, you're using your Gilgamesh Surge to uh, miss all of the uh, the arrows. And, and that's the entire fight. Very, very simple. I will note that right there at the end, he did shoot some of the arrows at me. And you can just duck those. I have yet to see anyone else um, playing this game or people who have done no damage videos on this boss fight that have realized that you can duck those. So you can duck all of his arrows. If you get in a bad bind and you need a second to recuperate yourself, um, just duck the arrows. He'll keep shooting them at you and it'll give you a chance to do that. Road a path to kill them. Okay, so for this section of the Raging Sea, um, these enemies that are about to pop up are really a pain in the butt, um, mostly because you really can't stun them or do anything to them. So what I like to do is, as you can see there, um, they do like a laser attack and I like to just preemptively put a clone and fight them on the other side. That way, if they do it, I have an out. Um, so... That first one's really the only one that's a bother. This one right here, we're able to stun CC. And then the uh, the third one that we get up here, we'll be able to uh, consistently kill as well. It's just that first one that's kind of a pain in the butt. So for this one, we'll hit it, drop it down, slam on it, and it'll, it'll die. In the next area underneath this, uh, we're going to get uh, basically locked into the area. We're going to have a gauntlet of enemies. 
the way that I do this is scripted. So what you're seeing here, this is all premeditated. And as long as you kind of follow this cadence, then what will happen will be the same thing every single time. Uh, so while it looks like it's a little chaotic and, and there's a lot of enemies, all of this is scripted. And what I'm doing is I'm just sit for the last wave of enemies. I'm just kind of sitting on the back wall and I'm waiting for them to come at me one at a time. Uh, and then we can either eat them and throw them out and uh, fight them that way. Or um, I can uh, I can just fight them anyways, just on that left side. And that's just so we don't aggro everything and we kind of do it in a uh, in a controlled way. So I'm going to drop down to the right here. This will be the last coin that I get in the entire run. I'm gonna go ahead and put a clone down here. It's really easy to fall off this ledge, and if I did that, we'd want to be able to get back up here really quick. Uh, but otherwise, you can just uh, stun lock that one with the combo. So really, really easy to deal with that one. And then for these jellyfish, uh, the best way to deal with these as you go through is watch the um, the tentacles, the legs, whatever you want to call them at the bottom. When they all come in and they stop moving, that's when the lightning is going to happen. So you'll want to be watching that and then just move through it like I do and you should get fine or get get through it fine. What I'm doing right here is I'm just waiting for these two to get close together so I can drop down and dash and land behind them and just go go past and skip them. This section is the uh, the worst part of the Raging Seas. This is where it gets very, very technical and um, very, very easy to take damage. So as soon as I get control of Sargon back, I'm going to make my way this way. That's just to get around the enemies. As I drop down, we'll get this enemy type that spawns in. I'm just going to go back and eat him and then move uh, to the end of the zone. And then we'll spit them back out before I go in. For this one, this is all heavily scripted. We want to knock that guy on this platform. We want to knock all of them back. Uh, for whatever reason, though, when they fall in the water, you don't, like, always get the coins. Or not the coins, but the crystals. It's kind of odd. Anyways, I'm going to eat her, throw her out, and then we're going to take care of these two jellyfish. We're going to move to this top platform, put an image, go down, jump up, and try and eat him. If he backs up, we just move forward and eat him. If I mess that up, that's what the image is for. So I'll go ahead and spit him out. Now I need to wait so that my... Uh, my ability comes off cooldown. We'll put another image. We're going to jump, jump, dash, grab. And if we mess that up, then basically we go back to our image. And then we'll have an opportunity to try again. So I spit them out before I come into the ship. Make sure that you do that. We're going to go down here and get all these crystals. And then as I make my way up here, we'll eat this last one and then move to the end of the zone. And we'll spit her out right here. Sargon. Okay, so for Orod, we're gonna um, want to change our uh, our surges back to like what what I call default, right? Which is just the two level ones. So we're gonna change those back and then go to the fight. We've got um, we've got max surge from the Menelaus fight. So uh, we're we're in a good spot to get in get in and fight this guy. So as we start the fight, the way that I start this is 100% scripted. In Orod, will I, or I will always do what I'm doing, and he will always do what he's doing. Okay, so that takes care of phase one. As we enter phase two, I'm going to go ahead and use a surge. As long as I close the gap, he will always jump back and throw. I'm going to get behind him, do some damage, then I'm going to go through. As he does that, I'm going to move to the center because after he does two attacks at the beginning of phase two, he'll jump to the center. Once he jumps to the center, the way that I like to avoid this is I like to hit him twice, jump up, shoot, 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 go down, jump back up, shoot, 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 go down. And now we're just going to spam damage on him. At this point, he's already pushed into phase three, so I'm going to back off for the transition. 
We're going to go back in, use another Surge as he's using his first ability. And now we just have to see what he does. Um, usually he will grab, but not it's not a guarantee. On this one, I'm going to just parry it. He jumps back. I go through. And now he's going to go up. He's done two attacks. He's going to go up into the center. And then we're going to finish the fight the same way as I did the first one. So we'll hit him. Um, one, two, three. Go down. Jump back up. One, two, three. Go down. And then we just finish him off. And that's the fight. Uh, basically, the way that fight works is phase one, phase two is always consistent. Again, as long as you have the amulets and, and everything that I have, as far as upgrades, you'll be able to push that damage out just that fast. Once you get into phase three, you just kind of have to understand the fight um, because you, you no longer can guarantee that he's going to do everything um, the same way every time. Other than after he uses two abilities, he will jump to the center uh, and, and do that... Um, you know, the crazy one where we're up in the air shooting him with the arrow. So, uh, in phase three, that's the only thing you can count on being consistent. Uh, his other abilities just understand how to uh, uh, recognize them and how to respond to them when he does them, and you should be fine. So for the next big combat section we're going to do, we actually need the Surge that we just got from Orod. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. And then we're going to head back to the uh, the upper city. Uh, via the Day Temple. Alright, so the strategy through all of this is the exact same as when we came up here from an Elias and we did the um, the farm on the archers to get uh, Max Surge. We're going to take the exact same route, the exact same thing. We're not going to stop and, and, and parry because we don't need to do that. I am going to run through so that the archer directly to my left resets and then I don't have to worry about, hopefully I don't have to worry about him shooting at me. So all of this will be the same. We'll come up. We'll eat that guy. We'll then spit him out. I gotta wait for the platform to go past because I don't want to spit him onto the platform and then he could just shoot me. Okay, we're gonna hold here and wait just like we did earlier. Okay, I see that he's uh, close enough so I can dash in and grab him. Now we will get one that's gonna shoot at us here and there's really no way to deal with that other than just be faster than it and get around it. I'm gonna go ahead and spit this archer out here. We're gonna get up to the top. And then what I wanted to do was shoot um, our chakram up, but for whatever reason, when you hit Y on an Xbox controller in the game, it also acts as an interact for the, uh, for the trees. So anyways, <clears throat> once we get up to the top here, uh, as soon as I see these enemies start to move towards me with their attacks, I'm going to go ahead and use our surge that we got from Orod. And if you do this with the correct timing, you will one shot both of them. Now, these enemies are the only ones that appear in the game, as far as I know. Um, so I kind of treat them as mini-bosses. We just burn that surge attack, and it deals with them, and then we never have to deal with them ever again. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't actually know how to fight those, so if you don't have the ability to use that surge and insta-kill them, you're on your own, because I never learned how to deal with their attacks, because that's the best way to deal with them, is just insta-kill them.
and a heater. Okay, time to go back to uh, the Haven. We're gonna go do some upgrades before we do this uh, Varm fight. So for the second Varm fight, as I mentioned earlier, we actually can use surges on him, unlike the very first encounter. So I'm coming up here so I can farm uh, surge levels, and then once I'm at full, we'll go back down and then we'll do the fight. I'm going to go ahead and swap out um, our level 3 surge here. Uh, we're just going to go in with two level 1s. And the reason for that is uh, both level 3 surges from Menelaus and Orod. Um, when you finish, like you can use them on, on Varum, but for whatever reason as you're coming out of the animation, Varum is able to control himself before you're able to control yourself. So he'll start attacking you before you're able to control Sargon, and you can very easily take damage coming out of him. So as we start the fight, um, I'm going to walk in, we're going to parry him, I'm going to use my Surge, and then I'm going to move to the other side, because the most dangerous part of Phase 1 here is that the other Sargon can act in such a way where Varum will not target you, and then all of a sudden he'll target you again, and he'll catch you off guard. So I find being as far away from that as possible helps. As we enter phase two, I'm just going to stand still. He'll dash to the other side. We'll parry, and then we'll go. Notice that I'm not doing our hit, hit, dodge, hit, hit, dodge um, combo. And the reason for that is because it doesn't work well here. Um, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of like that's that that third phase or going into the third phase on the first fight where I said, "Hey, I, I you know, just make sure that you don't, uh, you know, when you get to 50% health or he dashes, you make sure that you stop doing that, right?" So it's very similar to that. Um, the other thing I want to note on this fight is make sure that you turn V Sync off. Uh, myself and Pretzel uh, sat down and kind of figured out that. Um, we were getting this bug where anytime Varum rewound time uh, in this fight, we would get this issue where the, um, and it wasn't 100% of the time, but it was the vast majority of the time, where we would get this issue where the camera would zoom in and would not zoom out for like five seconds or something. So you would be able to control Sargon and Varum would be able to attack you, but you wouldn't be able to see anything because it's zoomed in. And we trace that down to the V-Sync, so it has something to do with the frame rate, so... Uh, once we turn V-Sync off, um, that allowed us to get through that fight. So make sure that uh, if you're already not playing the game with V-Sync off, that 
when you get to that fight that you do it with V-Sync off so you don't run into that bug. So what we're doing now is we're going to go back to the Haven and we're going to go into the forge and we're going to exit the forge out the right side. This puts you into the Tower of Silence and it kind of puts you exactly where you need to be to start the next section of the game. So uh, I highly suggest at this point to just come this way and then follow my path to uh, to get to where we need to go. I will say this though, this is where the, you know, so for the most part, the open world hasn't been too much issue, right? Um, you know, most of the enemies, we just run past them, uh, or there's a very easy way to kill them, et cetera, et cetera. The Tower of Silence is not that. <laughs> it is, um, it is very, very difficult to get through this section. There are a lot of things that can very easily do damage to you. Not to mention, um, one of the strongest enemies in the entire game is in this section. So, um, I'll speak to the areas where there is some strategy, but there are areas where, you know, you know, there's three or four different scenarios that could play out. And you need to be good at all of them. It's not like, hey, 100% of the time, this is going to happen and you do that. So this section is very, very, very difficult to get through without taking damage. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more in detail about those sections when we get to them. So that enemy right there that we just passed with the coffin or whatever on his back, um, that's the enemy that I was alluding to a second ago. So that enemy, for example, when we were up in the upper city, we used Orod Surge and that surge attack was able to kill both of those, you know, big enemies with shields, right? Um, if you use that same surge on one of those guys, they will still have like three or four hits of damage left before you kill them. They are, as far as I know, the strongest enemy in the entire game outside of boss fights. So, um, and you'll see why that is an issue and why this section is difficult because we're going to actually have to fight uh, three of those, if I remember correctly, um, inside of a tiny area. So.
So this enemy up here that I'm about to go after, you need to make sure that you take this one out. Because what will happen is as you go up on the right side, um, it'll start rushing at you. And then if you try to go up on the left side to avoid it, then you'll get uh, one of the big coffin guys throwing daggers at you, which we obviously don't want. As I make my way up to this uh, top area, we're going to jump over one, two, and then I need to shoot the skull. And then I'm going to suck this guy up and spit him out on the other side. Um, this area, you need to move through this area very carefully. Um, the, the, the skulls are always in the same spot, but they can, um, they can track you like, like inconsistently, uh, I guess is the best way to say it. So you can always guarantee that they'll be in the same spot, but you can't guarantee they'll move to you in the same way. So... I guess take that area slow if you need to drop back down to the platform where you start and you know do them one at a time if you have to but just make sure that you're careful going through there but that section really starts all the hard stuff so right after this cutscene we're gonna go up to the top and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head back to the day temple and we're going to get max surge using the arrow farm technique. Um, because like I said, this is the hard section. <laughs> so when it comes to open world, this is the hard stuff in the game. And then consequently, the boss fight, once we do all this, is the hardest one in the game. To do consistently anyway. Okay, so we're going to head back to the Tower of Silence. And now we're going to head uh, down into the left. Well, actually, I need to save because we need arrows here. <laughs> As I'm saying it in my head, I did it in the game. That's funny. I always do that where I come back and I get ahead of myself, which would be terrible. If I went in there with five arrows, we'd probably get a hit. Because the way we fight this is we want to... We want to go ahead and eat this guy. We want to spit him out. And then I'm always going to dodge backwards because they have this like big wide AOE attack they can do. So you want to make sure you're away from that if they choose to do it. But as you can see there, the way to fight these guys is to basically spit them out. And then we're going to do a one, two arrow, one, two arrow, right? Um, and that will keep them CC'd so that we don't have to actually fight them. Which we don't want to do. Those enemies are kind of a pain in the ass to fight um, straight up. So now we're going to refill our arrows, and then I'm going to go across. Um, so we have three keys, I guess, we have to uh, we have to do. Uh, that was the first key. We're going to go do the second one now. And the second one's probably the hardest of the three. So I'm going to eat that guy. We're going to drop down, and we have to do this very, very quickly because the... Uh, the frozen stones or whatever come down really fast. Spit him out. And then as I go across to the other side, I need to gauge what I'm going to do based on what the skull is doing. So if the skull's not on the edge, then we can just come up and hit it. If it's on the edge, it'll see you and it'll start to come down. You just shoot it with an arrow.
so as we teleport across here i want to do it very high up because as i come across i want to shoot the first skull and then run and this will give me enough room to get through all of that very quickly if the skulls are chasing me um i'm just gonna stop and turn around and do that sometimes they won't but most times they will for these skulls you just want to take it slow to include the two down here just take it very slow there's no reason to rush this All right, so now we're getting to uh, the, the hardest of the three keys. So as we come in here, we're going to have to deal with one of the big guys dropping down right in the center. So I'm just going to beat him up as much as I can before he goes active. We're going to go all the way to the other side, hit his two little minions, and then we should get them killed before he turns around to attack us. Once that's done, we want to move on the left. We're going to eat that guy. And then I should be able to pull this guy. I think I messed it up there. And luckily I got the dodge back just in time. That was fucking close. Um, but anyways, we get him down. We kill him. And then I'm going to spit this guy out. We're going to do the same thing with the arrows. All right. And now we're going to get two to drop on each side. So I'm going to go to the left one, beat him up until he goes to attack me. We'll dodge through. Then we're going to use a surge attack. And then as the surge was specifically using this surge so that I can attack while the damage is holding them still. And then I kill the one, we dodge through the second one, turn around, kill him. Um, and that'll get you through it consistently every single time if you do it that way. Uh, just maybe don't dodge the frog as last second as I did. <laughs> I forgot that that happened. That was kind of scary. Good reaction time on me though. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and regen arrows here, and then we're going to go down. Um, I don't need to farm here. I have two uh, bars, um, which is fine. This next section is not as bad, but it can be a pain. Um, but we're going to move through this section very, very slowly. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So as I drop down here, we're going to grab this guy. I'm going to take him right back out the way we came, and we're going to spit him back out in the other zone. And this is going to be a recurring theme. So uh, we're going to have uh, quite a few of these that we're going to have to deal with. And I'm going to deal with them basically in the same manner, which, which is we're going to eat them, and then we're going to spit them out somewhere else. So this cliff edge right here is where we're going to put all of them, except for the last one. And the reason I do this is just because it's the safest method that I could uh, come up with to ensure and guarantee you don't take damage here. Because essentially you're taking them and you're removing them from the fight instantly by killing them and you never have to uh, swing a sword or dodge an attack. So always want to look down there. That skull can sometimes float. And if he's too close to the platform, um, as you're dropping down, you could drop down right on top of him and he could hit you. So want to make sure you peek that before you uh before you drop down okay as i drop down in the next section you want to stay on the right side here there's going to be three skulls that's okay we'll deal with them and then we'll get our arrows because there is a mage on the left over there that we don't want to deal with so as I drop down here, we're going to eat that guy. We'll pull this. There is another mage on the other side, but we can just avoid that one. And then as we go through here, I'm just going to spit him out right here over the gap. And then we're going to go forward. So this will be the last key. And just like the other two, we come in here, we get locked in, right? So we're going to eat this mage. We're going to kill the skulls. I'm going to break these manually. You don't have to, but definitely don't break them with arrows. Uh, we'll do the normal strat on this guy. We'll get three skulls come in. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and break those in, in preparation for the last two. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get two mages that come in. So I'm going to eat the one on the right. And then we have to kind of fight this guy straight up. Um, 
And I don't know whether it's a bug or not, but that attack he just did, if you land in the area in front of him that looks clear, you take damage for some reason. Um, I, that has to be a bug. I don't know what else that would be. Uh, because it's completely open and there's nothing there. So just something to think about. Uh, you go to the very start of the video, um, at the bottom right of the title screen, it has the patch version of the game. So if you're watching this in the distant future, maybe this isn't going to be an issue for you. Um, but if you're playing it uh, and that isn't patched, just know that um, that can happen. That was a mess up. <laughs> Messed up my jump back. Anyways, um, I got sidetracked explaining that bug. When you come out here, same thing. Just play it very safe. Um, make sure that you don't uh, you don't try to go too fast against these skulls. You're going to be low on arrows, so using the chakram is a very good uh, method to get through it. Okay, so now we're gonna do more of the same. So I need to uh, I need to get back up here, and we need to go back and farm Surge again in preparation for the Darius fight. And then after that, we'll uh, we'll you know make our way back and go to Darius. But Darius is a very very difficult fight. And when I said earlier it's the hardest fight in the game, it's not that it's the hardest fight in the game mechanically. It's the hardest fight in the game cons to be consistent on because of the way it was designed. The fight was basically designed around the, um, like the sash grapple, whatever mechanic. And it's, it can be, I don't want to say buggy because that's not the right word, but it can be inconsistent where you want to grapple to, you know, say object three on the far right, but it grapples to the boss or it grapples to object two that's in the center. And there's no indicator. So like when you aim like your chakram, for example, right, there's an indicator. There's a line that tells you this is where it's going to go. There's really no indicator with with the sash, right? You just throw it out and you hold the stick in the direction that you want it to go and then it should go there. And you know, to the developer's credit, 90 plus percent of the time it does, right? But on a no damage run, when you're two hours and 40 minutes plus into a run, having it not work 100% of the time is going to be noticeable. And I've lost quite a few runs on this boss because I wanted to grapple to one of the points and it went to something else. And there's no way for me to know that it's going to do that ahead of time. I'm holding the stick in that direction and... It looks like it should go that way, but it doesn't, right? So that's the reason why this boss is a pain in the ass. Um, and why, at least for the no damage run, I consider it the worst in the in the in the game to do. Um well, I did not I did not regen my arrows. Do I go back? I have to go back. Pass Tayete, tell me you go back. Turn around! Turn around! Oh, there we go. I figured it out. <laughs> okay. All right. I figured it out. Good job, past Tayate. Good job. About to say, get your arrows back. You don't really need arrows on this fight, but they can help you um, stay in the air uh, for one of the mechanics if, um, if you need it. Usually, you can just use your uh, uh, dimensional claw to stay in the air. Uh, but sometimes it's better to use the arrows. It just kind of depends on timing. But you definitely want arrows for this fight as a backup. Anyways, um, unlike the other fights, there's really not a whole lot of scripting in this fight. So it's just really be good at the game, understand the mechanics. There's only a couple of attacks he's going to do. And the way that I choose to deal with them is as he's going to hit me with them, I, I kind of cycle in, squeeze in surge attacks. Um, to make sure that, you know, instead of having to dodge them or instead of having to parry them, I just ignore them completely because I get iframes from the, uh, from the surge attacks. However, you can't use surge attacks all the time, so you do have to do stuff like that. Um, now this is one of the scripted things. Uh, every time you go into phase two, he will 100% of the time do this ability and this attack. 
After this, though, it's no longer really scripted. It's pseudo scripted where he'll do two attacks. Um, he'll either do the slash or the stomp. Um, but then after those two attacks, he'll always do this one. So there's a little bit of scripting, but it's not as scripted as, say, like Orod or um, Menelias or something like that. So make sure that you are just good at this fight. Um, I know that looked dangerous, but for that one, I knew it was coming just because he had done every other ability that he was going to do. But as you can see, you know, a lot of this fight is grappling these three different points. And like I said earlier, that's what makes this fight so painful for no damage is because... And it's not super often, it's very rare, but sometimes you'll just, you'll go to grapple to one point and it'll go somewhere else. And then you'll take damage for it and it just feels really bad. <laughs> when you're like, that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do is this and you just didn't do that. But yeah, mechanically, this fight is not difficult. It's it's very timing based and it takes you out of your comfort zone from other fights because you're in the air so much, which no other fight really prepares you for. And now you're dead. All right, so that was the fight. So at this point, basically all that's left is uh, go upgrade, get through a couple more waves of enemies, and then final boss fight. So I'm going to upgrade um, a few things. So I'm going to buy this Xerxes coin. That'll give me two. Or that'll give me the one that I need to upgrade this to level two. And I don't think I stated this at all in this run so far. But this amulet, Turning Wind, increases the damage when I do the like slash slash dodge slash slash dodge. It increases that because whenever you do a dodge back, it increases the next attack. Uh, the next attack's damage. Um, so I'm going to upgrade that to max. And then the... Uh, the arrows that I get there, I absolutely don't need. Um, I don't know why I got them. Honestly, you don't need arrows for the last fight, but I had the money, so I i don't know. I just bought them, because why the hell not? But anyways, we're going to come back to the clockwork and make our way back. We have one enemy we have to contend with, but we're not actually going to fight it. We're just going to eat it and then uh, spit it out later. So this right here, this is 100% consistent. It will always happen like this. You'll grapple three times and then you'll uh, go ahead and eat that guy because you'll end up right in his face. Now, as we make our way to the top of this area, when we grapple up here, you want to dash to the left and then hug the left side. You do not want to go past this left side because you'll aggro that other um, enemy on the right. So I'm going to turn around, spit that one out, and we'll go in. I do admire you, Sock. All right, so this is it. This is uh, this is going to be our last uh, couple waves of going through enemies. 
Uh, these are all very, very simple, though, as long as you follow uh, my method here. So as we run up here, we're going to have two big birds ahead of us. Um, we don't care about the first one, but the second one, 90% of the time, is going to do this attack where it folds its wings in. Um, you want to shoot it with an arrow to stop that attack because we don't want to have to dodge any of that. So when we get up here, we're going to eat the archer. We're going to spit him out on the left side. That's very important. Stay on the left side of this area. As this guy comes in, we're going to eat him. We'll spit him out on the top. We'll deal with him. And then as we get to the right side, this enemy activates. And that's why we didn't want to get on that right side because we don't want him to be on top of the one that was below him. We want to, we want to deal with them safely one at a time. As we come up here, it's going to be the exact same method as before, except we're going to have to dodge this enemy. As you dodge that enemy, he can do a red attack. Um, if he does that red attack, you need to quickly dodge a second time and then jump dodge. And if you do that, you'll not only avoid him, but you'll avoid the bird. So I'm going to eat that archer. We're going to um, go ahead and deflect five of these arrows. And the reason why I wasn't worried about um, getting surge back is because of this. So even if I was at zero surge at this point, we come in here, five hits would get me to two and a half. And then I could either just go with two and a half, which um, I wouldn't want to do, uh, not for Varum, but you could spit the other archer out and wait until your um, uh, effect wears off of him, and then you could deflect him to get up to three. So anyways, I dropped down, I ate the, uh, the shield enemy. Um, I took care of him, and now you can see I dropped down. I'm just shooting this guy with arrows to keep him from attacking me so I can get close enough to eat him. And then we spit him out and deal with him too. And that's it. That's the last enemies in the game. The only enemy left is Varum. So now it's just the boss fight. As I come into uh, this next room, we're going to go ahead and save and replenish arrows and I'm going to swap some surges. So we're going to take our uh, second surge, we're going to move that into position one and then I'm going to get the uh, O-Rod surge and we're going to put that into position two. And that O-Rod surge is what we're going to use for uh, for part of the strategy. Uh, the, the regular surge we don't really use, it's kind of if, if I get the opportunity, which most of the time it's better to just attack him <laughs> because we do so much damage in this fight. So I'm going to try my very best to narrate this fight. Um, it, it, things do go fast. Uh, there is nothing scripted beyond the very first attack uh, that he does in phase one. And then at the beginning of each phase, those are all scripted. Um, so it's really just understanding how to deal with each one of his attacks. So at the very beginning, we're going to move to the center get directly under him. I'm going to eat the first orb. I'm going to stay still and then move to the right on the third. For these, depending on what side we're on, we'll, uh, we'll dodge them. Anytime he does this, we'll just grapple over to him. Double jump over his head and hit him in the back. For this one, we'll grapple up. Hit him a few times and then we'll drop down. And now obviously we'll rinse and repeat. So eat, stay still, move to the right. And then whenever we get a chance, we're going to shoot that orb back at him. Ah, so jump over him, shoot the orb, hit him a few times. For this one, uh, this is pretty standard. I think everybody knows how to deal with this. You've got to put your image on the outside and then teleport to it when the ring closes on you. And that should be it for phase one. Good. Perfect. So as phase two starts, he's always going to do kind of this like slash attack into us like a melee. So we're just going to dodge through that. And then from there, it's kind of on him what he does. So I'm pretty sure he does every single ability he has in this phase. Um, so just deal with it the way I deal with it, and you should get through it fine. This is probably the worst attack in the entire fight because it happens so quickly. And you you have to react very, very fast um, to what you're seeing. 
Hey, we just dodge under all of these. There's no reason to parry them. Because even if you parry it, he's just going to do the next attack in his combo anyway. So in phase two for this one, you want to put your image at the bottom, go up, hit a couple of times, go back to your image, and then move left or right to avoid the orbs. Alright, so same thing with this one. The only difference is that his uh, crystal or whatever is shielding him has a bit more health to it. So it takes a little bit longer to break, but once we break him, it's guaranteed we're done with phase two. Since we do so much damage there. Alright, so as I move into phase three, the reason why we have Orod Surge is because as soon as we come out of this cutscene, we're going to pop it immediately. We're not going to delay it, we're going to pop it. And you'll see how much damage that does to him. It basically halves his health instantly. Then what we want to do is move to the right because he's always going to do this attack. You move into the wall, you duck, and you'll never get hit by this ever. Alright, so we're going to back, go back to the middle of the room. Now this is the hardest ability in the game, uh, or not the game, but for this fight. So we're going to do our image on the ground, same as the last phase, but then we want to throw our Chakram up, hit him a few times, and then dash jump over the orb. That orb always feels super tight to jump over. It really does. It's always scary. Okay, dodge through those, same as we did all the other times. That'll take care of phase three. Alright, so as we move into phase four, he should do the same thing as three, or as two, where he slashes at you. Um, so we'll just avoid that, and then after that, it's again on him, he can do whatever he wants, right? So it's just knowing how to deal with it. Now this is the same as every other phase, nothing different here. We will start getting what I call the fingers. <laughs> they kind of look like the finger gloves from, uh, from like a, a football game or something. <laughs> And again, you can shoot arrows. Um, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do your uh, your dimensional claw there though, like we did on some of the other Varm fights. Um, simply because you'll stay in the air too long and you won't be able to respond to the next one. So I used the surge here just because I had it. We got some damage. We didn't get all of it. And with that, the Crossroads of Time main quest is done, and this no damage run is complete. So if you stuck with me to this point, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the gift of your time and attention. This was a really fun and difficult challenge run to route and complete. I hope this run was both educational and insightful for you to watch. This is definitely one of the best games that Ubisoft has released in quite a while. Easily in the top three from that studio in recent memory. Anyways, if you enjoyed this run and you're interested in similar content, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a new run being released. If you'd like to ask questions or interact with the community, be sure to join the Discord. The link for that and all of my socials are in the description section below. With that, thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.